Hey everyone, Rob here, and I have some updates on the situation going on in Grindavik. We have a recap of the risk assessment, what the government thinks of the Blue Lagoon opening, as well as uh, some other news. So we're going to start off with the very first thing, the Minister of Culture and Trade, Lilia Alfredsdottir. She says she's very satisfied that the Blue Lagoon is open despite the earthquakes and the two volcanoes that have erupted in the Reykjanes Peninsula near Grinovic and of course near the Blue Lagoon where they have built fortified defenses around uh, yeah, around the Blue Lagoon and, and the north of Grinovic. She says the company is extremely important when the tourism uh, in the, you know in the face of the tourism industry and almost 900 people work at the Blue Lagoon which kind of shocks me. Now she was a guest yesterday at an open meeting in Arborg, where she reviewed numerous issues, both uh, you know in the area, in Iceland and abroad. However, most of the time was spent discussing the situation in Grindavik and what the government is doing to assist the community there. Now, next week, she said that they're going to submit a bill where the buyout of housing is being, being introduced. And that's the buyout of housing to the people of Grindavik. Now, she's also heard that not everyone thinks that it's you know, a really good good idea to do this because there are various people who want to move back to Grindavik as soon as it's safe and she says that it's not going to be a surprise that we would see a similar development as was the case you know 50 odd years ago in the Westman Islands uh, where some people leave and then some people come back but uh, she does say all of this and and the bill that's being passed all of this is with an understanding that Grindavik will once again become a safe place to live. Many people are surprised that while the people of Grindavik are not allowed to spend more time in their town or even move home, why is it that the Blue Lagoon, just you know, not, it's not very far, maybe a five, ten minute drive, why is the Blue Lagoon allowed to be open as well as the hotels at Blue Lagoon? And she says the fact is, and this is a quote, the fact is that almost 900 people work at the Blue Lagoon and the Blue Lagoon is one of Iceland's most powerful tourism companies, and it affects the entire tourism industry when the Blue Lagoon is closed. When it's assessed that it's safe and people have you know, practiced evacuation and other such things, she thinks the Blue Lagoon can remain open. Now, this is kind of a strange statement because rather than assessing the risk as we can see here, we have uh, the risk assessment map from the meteorological office. Lilia is sort of focusing on the fact that closing the Blue Lagoon would just be bad for tourism. It's a bit strange, and if we take a look at some of the areas and recapping on where all of this activity has been, earthquakes, as well as uh, well, eruptions, and the land rise from magma accumulation, most of the discussion is from this Svartsengi area, which is right here, you know, see Svartsengi, beside the Blue Lagoon. Now, it's been very curious to me that they've had to evacuate the Blue Lagoon and the hotels uh, numerous times, and that the land rise in this area is, not, well, has now exceeded that from the previous two eruptions, and the meteorological office volcanologists, geologists, everyone is saying that there is an event that is going to be occurring in the next days to weeks and that everyone should be prepared and the risk is getting more and more dangerous. But so rather than focusing on the science, we have the government now just saying, well, the Blue Lagoon is important for tourism, so it should stay open and she's, she's glad for that. Now, I don't disagree with the statement that the Blue Lagoon is very important for tourism, but I think that when it comes to the safety of the people, the, the information and the justification for keeping something open should definitely be on the science and not just uh, a financial tourism sort of aspect. But that's just me. She does continue to say that they're doing everything that they possibly can and they want to continue to contribute to overcoming the situation that's going in you know, near Grindavik and the Reykjanes Peninsula. Uh, but of course, you know, she understands there are many people who have become frustrated as uh, she herself said she would be if she couldn't get to her house. And she's like, well, we just have to work with it and, and try and take care of all of these people. Now, when it comes to people going into Grindavik, as I said, 
you know, you can't stay there. People are not allowed to access their home. But starting today, a thousand people are going to be allowed to go into Grindavik, into the town on a certain sort of area. You see pictures of it here coming from some of the bigger news agencies in Iceland, courtesy of them. So they're saying around 800 cars are going to make their way into town. There's checkpoints where you can see staff scanning QR codes of everyone who made their way into town, which is how the police think they will know how many people are in Grunovic at any given time. And all of this is, you know, you have to live there. You have to be authorized to go into town uh, to be able to get your stuff. It's, that's essentially what they're doing is they're going into town to try and collect any personal belongings that they want to save because, you know, the town is it's basically been been declared uninhabitable for the most part since November when they evacuated the town. There have been little periods, you know, around Christmas where they let people go back in. But for the most part, uh, these people are homeless. Now, those who did not think they could provide storage space themselves have received answers that it will be possible to transfer their property to storage facilities um, located in certain areas in Reykjavik is by it. Now, according to public safety notice, farm plots will be accepted from 11 to 11. So that's a 12-hour window there. And last night so all these qr codes 600 qr codes were sent to those who have been allocated time this morning at 8 a.m and tomorrow over 500 qr codes will be sent to those who are able to enter the town at 3 p.m so it's a very small number of people given how much is needed and this people's belongings their entire lives are stuck in this town they're given qr codes you have to be registered to live there in order to get access to go anywhere near this because it is a very dangerous place with all the fissures and the cracks uh, as well as you know buildings and things like that. infrastructure is just not there for this town again the risk assessment has scaled up Grindvik a little bit still you know it's not the highest danger level that's you know the area beside the blue lagoon where there's been previous uh, eruptions but it's still very dangerous last thing i want to touch on really quick is the earthquake situation over the last 48 hours. We could see just on the graph down here at the bottom, the intensity over the past you know week or so has elevated slightly since the week previously. We can also see that there's more clusters closer together. And uh, as I said, so it's a combination of increased activity, even though a lot of them are small, uh, but there are a few ones that are now starting to peak up between a magnitude of 2 and 3. And of course, we saw some that just peaked a little bit over a magnitude of 3 uh, a few days ago, a week ago. When looking at the trend, we're seeing it picking up a little bit. Intensity picking up a little bit. So this is all in line with what experts are saying are a precursor to an event that will happen in the next days to weeks. So... Keep an eye on all this, stay tuned, because I think before we know it, I'll probably be doing another video saying we got another eruption going. But that's all the news for now. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, as I said, stay tuned because uh, I'm sure that there's going to be some big news coming up in the near future.